Good question. Good question. I like the fact that we're Friday. I, you know, obviously, we would have we would have preferred uh, Portland or Albuquerque. Uh, that's a good question. So I, I don't know, uh, but it's close. Uh, the the day extra is monumental, but I think also staying locally is a huge boost for you. I think it's probably all of the above. Even though we are going to charter, it's still a pretty long flight. Now you go to the East Coast time zone as opposed to staying out here out west. Uh, but we're 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 playing. Uh, we're not going all the way to Pittsburgh, which is good. Uh, and uh, we are a six seed, and that's good. So we'll we'll be ready to play, and especially going distance, playing Friday as opposed to Thursday. I think that's really good. You know, I, I think they wrote Gonzaga plays in Pittsburgh on Thursday, right, against West Virginia that's a drive away. So we've been there before, been there, done that. Don't want to do it again if we don't have to. Coach, the players talked about how NC State likes to get up and down the floor a lot. They like to run. Will you want to run with them if you can? We've got to, we've got to run selectively. We've got to run with intelligence. We've got to run – uh, when opportunity presents itself for a good, easy shot, but we can't run, 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 run. And the most important thing is we've got to make sure we don't have live ball turnovers, we don't take quick, bad shots that allows them with an unbalanced floor to get out and run because they're very good in transition. I don't want to think it was a factor, Bernie. Uh, we we played eight guys. We played three games in three days. I think it affected Tim more than anybody, and he would not want to admit to that. I think his knees were really bothering him at the end. But now we'll at least have a day in between. We're playing a team in North Carolina State. If you look at their minutes play, they play seven guys. So I think in game one we're going to play eight guys and – they're going to play seven guys. Steve, how much does it serve to your advantage the fact that you guys are going for the third straight year and NC State hasn't been there for six years? I'm not sure what that will mean. Uh, obviously, it's an advantage to having played before and know the routine, the obligations you have of the press conference, the open 40-minute practice, and and there's some demands on your time that if you've done it before, you're you're used to. Uh, they play in a league that's very high profile. They play uh, in situations where there's a ton of media there. So I think that they will be prepared. Uh, if you look, if you go back and pull the video of when our game was announced, they had a camera in. I don't know where it was, but for, with their team. And they probably, if they were honest, before that popped up, they're probably saying NIT bound. And then when they saw their name, they 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 were so euphoric with what they did and said, and I don't blame them. So both teams are going to be excited to be there, and I believe it'll be a really good game. Coach, will you change any practice schedule to accommodate for the 9.40 Pacific time tip? Or change anything around, get guys up earlier, anything like that? No, no, we're we're leaving here Wednesday, uh, but we, no, we won't we won't change we won't change much. Steve, did it remind you of anybody you guys played this year, North Carolina State, the way they you get after their philosophy? Or... That's a good question. I they got they got size and strength a little bit like New Mexico where. You worry, especially with us with a smaller lineup, how will we be able to guard them inside? And they go inside a lot. Uh, C.J. Leslie was a McDonald's All-American. He had a not-so-good freshman year, and he's having a All-American type sophomore year. He's really good. And, uh, you know, Hal, their big guy, they said was 300 pounds. Now he's down to about 270, and he's a beast inside. And uh, then they come with Painter as their third big. So they've got three big guys that are not – not just tall, but they're big and strong and good. 
So I, I worry a little bit about that. And then they run like, you know, they run like a Vegas tries to run and like uh, New Mexico runs. So uh, we've played teams that do some of the things. I don't know uh, whether they're, that's a fair comparison or not. I've watched three, three full tapes and some highlight stuff on them. Uh, I, know, I do know that what you know. I know that uh, in order for them to be in the tournament, they had to get on a roll and play really good basketball. They had a four-game win streak leading into their loss to Carolina that propelled them into the tournament. Uh, so they're playing, as their coach said, their coach said uh, they're playing as good a basketball as anybody in the country right now. So this will be a this will be a good test for us. Uh, Chase has always been a scorer. I've said that. Early on, he shot the ball like crazy. Then he went through a rough patch where he had a hard time making shots. Hopefully, he's back. He's had some games where he shot the ball with confidence. He's had stretches, uh, Colorado State in the semis, and even in our, our run to get even close against New Mexico where he was unstoppable shooting the ball. I do think his biggest gains over the course of last year to this year has been his his pride and willingness to say, I'm going to be a really good defender. I think he's got a lot better with his on-ball defense and commitment to defense. Coach, Jamal and Chase both made the all-tournament team. They were able to stay hot even though they were playing three games in three days. Uh, what do they have, uh, now that they have some rest behind them, how good do you think they can, they can both be as they've been uh, hot recently? Those are the two guys that take more shots than anybody else. And so you got to you got to hope that uh, they're smart with their shot selection. And they also know, uh, is my shot, have I made a couple in a row? Then we'll help you hunt a shot. You, you don't need to hunt it. But if you've missed a couple, you need to do what Jamal has been capable of doing. Find a way to get to the free throw line and get yourself one where nobody's guarding you. And he's done a really good job of that. Uh, but both of them, they can score the ball, and they like to score the ball. I think I think it could have uh, a few years ago, but I think kind of the question that was asked before, we played in these types of moments before, uh, and you don't have to go back even to last year, but we played and been successful. We went into a tough place to play, Tucson, Arizona, and beat Arizona in their building. We beat Cal in this building. We went to Baylor and played really tough, hard basketball. So we played some really good people from high-profile leagues and more than held our own. We've won a good number of those kinds of games. So I don't think that will be a factor. That got it? One, one other question. Uh, Jamal's apology yesterday I think was very respected and appreciated by the team. And, and for those that were in that room yesterday that saw it, was that, um, how was the decision made to do that? Was that something you encouraged him to do? Was it something he came and said, Coach, I, I want to do this? And, and how was the decision made to do it in, in somewhat of a public arena? We talked about it. When I saw it on the bus ride home, I watched the game, and I saw it on the game, what happened. I called him up, showed it to him, and uh, and and said, this is not going to go away, uh, and you need to deal with it, and we need to deal with it, and I'm disappointed and upset that we have to deal with it. That's how I started it. So he said, I'm sorry, you know, and I, it's easy to say I'm sorry. Uh, it shouldn't have happened. It should not have happened, I, regardless of anything that went on. You've got to not have rabbit ears. You've got to be in tune. You've got to do. So now what do you do? Now I said, okay, now where do we go? He said, well, uh, let me talk to the team. And then we got through talking to the team. I said, well, tomorrow. How do you expect to deal with it? So we, I kind of threw it out there and threw the little line in the water, and he bit on it. So rather than me saying, here's what you have to do, I think I planted enough seeds to where he said, I think this is what needs to be done. But again, should never have happened. We talk about responsibility, accountability. 
And the more profile you are, the higher profile you are, the more you have to make sure that you're doing things when nobody's watching as if everybody was watching. Steve, knowing how much that, that means to you, that accountability, is there any chance here for discipline? Any chance he won't start? Any, any repercussions for what he did from you? Uh, he probably will start. We're doing some things. There, there's some things that I'm in, in motion with that we'll, that we'll wind up doing that will be done internally uh, that I don't need to go into detail on, and I don't think it's anybody's business other than ours. But in all probability, he'll start. Is there any disciplinary action that will be taken by NCA or Mountain West Conference or anything that you've heard of? He got a public reprimand from the, from the Mountain West Conference, just like I did a year ago. So it's, uh, but his was deserved. <laughs> I hope I don't get one for that. <laughs> All right. I hope you can follow us, and I hope we're doing this again next week, talking about our next opponent. Thank you.